If you aren't familiar with the Coca-Cola building, let me describe it to you. It's a large ocean liner themed building built in the middle of industrial downtown yeah. Los Angeles. It's a, what, streamlined modern. It's a, one of the many streamlined modern marvels in Los Angeles that stems from the 1930s. And it's astounding that we have been allowed to keep it intact for as long as we have yeah well i guess you'll get into it but is it still like churning out coke they're not a bottling plant. am i still churning out coke if i drink a bunch of coke do i pee pepsi <laughs> that's how you make pepsi Did i say that Just my peed out coke <laughs> my godfather my nino worked for when i was growing up seven up so i went to the seven up bottling plant when i was a Grow kid up seven up he worked for heads up seven up big heads up seven up uh, he worked for seven up when i was growing up so i went to a bottling plant when i was a kid and he gave me a bunch of the tops the silver uh, whatever they're called. So I got a bunch of those just like spare push rings. But I remember walking on the plant and the, the floor was sticky everywhere. <laughs> I remember that. And then he, he left there and I think he worked for Coke afterwards. Trader. It was, real, it was a heartbreak because I loved 7-Up. And he's like, I'm going to work for Coke now. I'm like, oh, I like Coke less. <laughs> Can you stop being my godfather? <laughs> so let's go back and talk about the man behind the Coke boat, the Coca-Cola, the Cola cruise ship, if you were. The architect is one Robert Dara of Salt Lake City. Just before he worked on the Coke, a place that won't allow Coke. They won't allow Coke. any kind of Coke. Any pick one, and they won't allow it. Just before he worked on the Coca Cola building, he designed the cross. Okay, his other thing. Just before he worked on the Coca Cola building, he designed the Crossroads of the World in Hollywood. Oh, really? One of the first open air malls in the country. Crossroads of the World was owned by Alec Crawford, wife of the notorious gangster type Charles Crawford, the Great right. Wolf, who was gunned down in a restaurant on that lot, and then she built the crossword of the world <laughs> this guy designed that's it. his tombstone yeah those are two uh impressive buildings very impressive and very different so he has like a, yeah. his, his portfolio has a good look to it <laughs> i could do this or i could do this we're, we're all about ship. resumes and yeah. portfolios right now. i think doesn't the crossword kind of have a ship theme to it too? it does i think the windows are kind of like, like curved port-hole. and bubbly like yeah that. like portholes or something your porthole stop not in front of everybody in front of all my friends the dog <laughs> <laughs> and that kid <laughs> the rabbit squirrel yeah <laughs> robert darrow was born in slc in april of 1895 that's all slc Salt Lake City. Oh. <laughs> they remember they only the C stands for Coke, remember? <laughs> Dara was the son of a prominent railroad man, S. V. Dara, who worked at the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. The V stands for Coke. <laughs> <laughs> the Denver also somehow stands for Coke. I don't know how. Uh Robert's aunt was also a well known Texas railroad woman named Avery Turner, who was an executive at the Santa Fe Railroad. And their her and her husband's house is like pr- one of those like preserved spots in Texas that you can go visit now. Like the Alamo. Like the Alamo, yeah. But anyways, her nephew came to LA and made a big ship in the middle of downtown. Darrow was a graduate of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Harvard, receiving degrees in architecture from both of them. So he comes to Los Angeles in 1924 at the age of 29 and quickly establishes his architecture firm, Darrow and Associates in Beverly Hills, where he also lives on Smithwood Drive, uh, not too far from Roxbury Park. I wrote that down. I looked it up. No idea what that means. You looked it up and you just found Night at the Roxbury? His name is attached to many famous buildings in Los Angeles, not necessarily the chief architect, but his name is sort of like attached in different ways. The Acme Brewery in Vernon, which is closed. The Southern California Gas Company number one building at 800 Flower Street. Uh, and some unconfirmed buildings, which he may have had something to do with. I'm not quite sure, but the sound stages at RKO Studios. His name's attached to that. The early Disney Animation Building on Hyperion. Charlie Chaplin's house. The Wilshire Brown Derby. And he also, also he had a patent for a juice squeezer. Do you know anything about this? <laughs> no. He had a patent he for did. a juice squeezer. I know who can sue him about no, that, though. I know, I know a certain judge would take umbrage <laughs> with him. But it seems like his first big project was for Stanley Barbie, president of the Coca-Cola Company of Southern California. That's confusing. That's like, nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm, to use Yo-Yo again, I'm Dennis Yo-Yo. Yeah. I make Slinkies. I'm Joseph G.I. <laughs> Joe. I am G.I. Joseph. <laughs> G.I. Joseph. <laughs> and I sell hula hoops. <laughs> For those who need a one-sentence refresher, in 1886, a pharmacist, Dr. John Pepperton, sold the first glass of Coca-Cola in Jacob's Pharmacy in downtown Atlanta. And by 1892, the Coca-Cola Company was founded and since then has tried to take over the world. One <laughs> soda with cocaine in it at a time. One lawsuit against a much smaller company at a time. <laughs> and that's how you amass wealth. You build an octopus type corporation in America and you just crush everything. And then people in other countries are like, I want to I wanna go to America. <laughs> I thought, I'd love to go to America. Start Ford. Now, the bottling building at 1334 South Central Avenue at the corner of 14th and South Central dates back to 1915, but Stanley Barbie was looking to renovate and consolidate the four existing buildings. There was a brick office building, a production warehouse, and then like a various other warehouse buildings and he wanted to put them on all into one structure so after stanley barbie saw the marvelous crossroads of the world design he knew he wanted dara for the coca-cola building so it was already a building but he like slapped a boat on it yeah it, it was four bu- 
buildings. See, I, I kind of know what the inside looks like. I'm pretty sure it's not like a uncle. boat and then four buildings inside. I'm pretty sure he's like, okay, knock these buildings down. Let's consolidate them the one. Let's try to like, reconfigure things and put it all into one big boat that won't go. You're near gonna the need water. a bigger boat building. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Um, man goes into Coke. Coke goes <laughs> into the bottle. Coke goes into body. Pepsi comes out of body. <laughs> Anyways, both Cross Worlds and the Coca Cola building were both done in 1936, which is crazy okay. that we got the two yeah. big landmarks that are still around today by the same person in the same year. Both landmarks, by the way, that don't get a lot of You're respect. Right. Yeah. Crosswords of the World gets... Cro- what did I it's say? Crosswords of the Words? Yeah. Crosswords of the Puzzle? They get more because they're in halt. They're like right there. So it's like a tourist stop. But I don't see people walking through it as much. No, but like what tourist is driving by this neighborhood? Yeah, I feel like a lot of people stumble upon it like, what? <laughs> Was there like a tsunami? Is this the Queen Mary? <laughs> so why an ocean liner? What, what does bottling Coca-Cola have to do with a boat or the ocean or the sea? Many think the design is humorous and lump it in with a wacky Southern oh, California. Oh, like they think about us. Yeah. Like people think about us without saying. Exactly. They, they look at us and they're like, oh, humorous. They think. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Humorous. <laughs> not impractical. Humorous. It's all satire. They're satyrs. The satyrs. They're not <laughs> satirical. They're satyrs. So people lump it in the Coca-Cola building with like the California. It's called programmatic themed architecture that right. we love. Like the idle hour is like a big barrel yeah. or the big tamale that we talked about. The donut's a big donut. Donut's a big donut. Um, <laughs> big donut. donut. <laughs> the building, here's the thing with the Coca Cola building it is that. Right? Yeah. But also, what if it was a giant Coca Cola bottle? I thought about that, or like on its side. But like the tallest building in the oh, world, yeah. and it was a Coca Cola bottle. Also, like, it had like a tallest thermometer in the world, too. <laughs> the condensation caused like <laughs> flooding of neighborhoods. Sewer rats dying all the time. It is like that wacky programmatic architecture. It is that, but also it's one of the most elegantly designed examples of streamlined architecture. Right. And, but because of that, it exists in the middle area. It's too beautiful to be a Route 66 roadside architecture thing, and it's also too wacky and fun to be like the Richfield building building of the Pan Pacific yeah. Auditorium. It's right in the middle. Yeah. Again, like us, right in the middle. Between elegantly designed and <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Between practical and impractical. <laughs> Not only is the line blurry, we've blurred everything around us too. <laughs> We're the giant dog smoking a pipe that sells chili <laughs> of podcasts. We're like the painting of the dogs playing poker, but by like Picasso. So it's sort of like, it's a work of art, but oh. <laughs> Picasso's version of dogs playing poker, <laughs> which is for some reason now a painting we bring up in every single episode. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's now why. taking now that we've talked about the riots we could bring up something else it's our new through line through <laughs> all the episodes so we come back to the original question so why an ocean liner mm. there is no documentation from Darrow or Barbie regarding this but in 1985 Robert 1985 Dar- 1985 great Scott Robert Darrow's daughter Betty Dara Jensen wrote into the LA Times to clarify my dad liked boats. <laughs> it's like a full page. Ad. My dad watched every episode of The Love Boat and loved it. She wrote in because at some point someone had speculated that they chose the ocean liner because it lent the company to the image of purity. So she yeah. sent a. I don't know. Like, when are boats. Pe- like, do you know how the ocean works? <laughs> Have they lived through coronavirus? <laughs> she sent a letter into the LA Times, which they published, correcting this. She said, first and foremost, that Stanley Barber was a weekend sailor. Mm. When when a midnight toker. The Joker's back. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have a first name? When Barbie and Stanley Barbie, I keep saying his first name and his last name because I don't want you to get me. When Stanley Barbie asked Dara to suggest something for the design that would represent the utmost in cleanliness, Dara replied, an ocean liner, which is a weird thing to say, but okay. Is that true? I've never been on an ocean liner before. They seem kind of dirty. I mean, swab the poop deck and all that. Yeah. That's that's a way to clean it. God, 91 episodes, you've been dying to say that this whole time. But he says an ocean liner and Barbie, Stanley Barbie, but Stanley Barbie, the weekend sailor. Come on, Barbie. Let's go. Let's go disco. I forget how that song goes. Come on, Barbie. Let's go Pepsi. <laughs> Nay. Nay. Let's no. go Coca-Cola. <laughs> but Stanley Barbie, the weekend sailor and boat lover, must have loved that idea when, when he replied that. And like that, we have a Coca-Cola bottling plant in industrial downtown Los Angeles looking like an ocean liner. As one LA writer put it, Dara and Barbie, avid yachtsmen, decided a ship motif would project the attributes which Coca-Cola sought to promote. Modernity, cleanliness, and progress. Modernity, modernity, Pfizerdity, Johnson & Johnsonity. <laughs> AstraZeneca Erdity. Say it again. <laughs> no, you got it. Cut. Modernity. Or is it modern? Yeah, modernity. We've, we've heard the term Moderna too many times. Yeah, when my brain is just like, give it to me. Modernity, cleanliness, and progress. Sure. I'll uh, buy it, and I will also buy Coke. Oh, no From doubt. a guy in the bathroom at Flappers. Yeah, <laughs> Flappers, who is insisting that it's going to make me funnier. Look at me. I haven't described the building yet other than as an ocean liner. So I went to the Society of Architectural Historians website. So they, they had a really good description of it. So I'll read it. Dara used reinforced concrete for the new facade with simulated river 
rivets around the curved entryways and double rows of porthole windows that mimic an ocean liner. The flat roof is ornamented with a metal catwalk and railing. A Coca-Cola sign is expertly placed on the landlocked ship's bridge. The entire 150 by 200 foot four-story high ship is painted nautically white or nautical white nautical with a street-level waterline band of black and an elegant narrow horizontal band of red a yard higher. The building's nautical theme is continued inside with lavished, I've seen pictures, it's great, inside with lavish details such as mahogany flooring and handrails. Actual ship ventilators, they brought actual ship ventilators, hmm. brass ladders and fittings, as well as the steel ship doors that lead to offices complete with a Hollywood-style simul. Simulacrum. I Simulacrum. I mean. Simulacrum. I know that word. I don't know what that word means. You know enough to correct me, but I that's know. about it. I know enough to make other people think <laughs> I'm smart by making them feel dumb. I know the Necronomicon. <laughs> it was a remodeled and expanded, and I believe in the mid-60s and again in the 70s, but bigger bottling operations were moved out of that building and down LA and headed towards Downey and San Diego. In 2002, an article mentioned that the Central Avenue facility was still producing soft drinks in 2-liter and 20-ounce plastic bottles, so it's still an active building. Building, okay. although it's kind of like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. I never see anyone go in or out, but they tell me that it's still going. You, you didn't enter the contest to find uh, the golden Coke <laughs> where you buy a bottle of Coke and if it comes out yellow, you either won or lost. Yeah, you find them on the freeway exits. Yeah, you just pick them up on the side of freeway exits. And if that Coke bottle comes out yellow, you get the keys to the factory. <laughs> uh, the Coca Cola bottling plant is not open to the public, not even for tours, but it's clearly visible but from the street. We see smoke coming out of the chimney. Yeah. And if a man comes up to you in an alleyway, <laughs> trust him. <laughs> Which is basically a Coca-Cola Pepsi story. Yeah. He's going to come up to you. He's going to stop you. Somehow he knows that you won. He's going to lean in and he's going to say, I'd like to buy the world a Coke. <laughs> it was designated a Los Angeles Historical Cultural Monument in 1975. So please take a trip down Central Avenue, not only for jazz, not only for history, but to see an ocean liner. <laughs> but to see a boat in the middle of a city. <laughs>